George, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. How are you? I'm doing fine. Happy to be with you. Brilliant. Um, I, I'm a real boxing nerd, and so you're like royalty to me, so that this is just amazing. Um, I'll get straight into it. Uh, a lot of boxers, a lot of legendary boxers have amazing stories, but not all of them make it onto the big screen. What was it like for you watching your life unfold up there from the mistakes to the triumphs, uh, just seeing it all laid bare on the big screen? It's, it's a scary thing when you spend your whole life trying to conceal your life. You dark glasses, dark windows, big gates around your home so that no one can know, know anything. Now, all of a sudden, it's on the screen, and you really have to suck in and say, you know what? I can do it. <laughs> it's not an easy thing to see your life portrayed on in movies. No, I bet. And uh, obviously, for a boxing movie to be successful, we, the audience, really need to believe that the actor is a boxer, you know? How much of an input did you have when, with Chris when it came to, like, because your style was so unique. How much of an input did you have in the training, the choreographing, mimicking? You know, were you really hands-on? Did you train with him? How did it work? Yeah. Just a little talk with uh, Chris Davis. But he was an, has been an outstanding actor. And I, that's what I wanted in the movie, an outstanding actor. Forget about celebrity and everything. If you're going to tell your story that'll last a lot longer than me, you needed a good actor. And Chris Davis, what an actor. He had me on the edge of my seat. He had me pulling for George Foreman. Even had me pulling against George Foreman. The guy did a great job. Mm -hmm. And I guess one of the amazing things about cinema is that it can revive people who aren't with us anymore, even for a few minutes. And your movie does that with Muhammad Ali. Now, obviously, you guys didn't get off to the best start, but you became great friends afterwards. What was it like watching that relationship unfold and reliving conversations and moments that you shared with him? Yeah, that Ali was a great part of my boxing career, a great part of my life. And at the end of the day, uh, we became even great friends. I really fell in love with the guy. And we talk all the time, talk on the iPhone, and we could film one another. And I love the relationship. To this day, I still miss him. I didn't like the idea that he beat me in Africa, <laughs> but I love the idea it made us greater friendship, friends. Um, you talked about how it was difficult to watch, you know, how scary it was to watch yourself and your, your life being told. Was there was there one moment in particular that you particularly dreaded uh, seeing? And was there a moment that you really enjoyed reliving again? Yeah. When you're watching the movie, I did with my grandkids, can you believe? And oh. they I am going into this house and uh, run down homes, owning a little piece to eat. And I wasn't sure I wanted my grandkids to see that I had to live like that. Mm -hmm. But that was difficult. But I saw them react in a positive way, and it made me happy that it was portrayed in the movie. Brilliant. And then in the movie itself, you obviously achieved everything. You stood up into the big moments. And I was wondering, here in Ireland, we have a fighter, Katie Taylor, She's got a big fight in a couple of weeks. Do you have any advice for her, stepping up for her big moment? Yeah, you know what? It's a good thing that you bring up Ireland because we all know that the Irish produce such great fighters. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to have Irish behind your name, that means you could fight to the last bell. So if ever there's a place I wanted the movie to be seen and portrayed and experienced is in Ireland itself. So that makes me happy. Ireland, right. oh boy. <laughs> Thank you so much, George. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm done. I'm not going to box anymore. Do you know what you're walking away from, son? What's going on, Lee? Hey, how's it going? Um, here, I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, I guess my first question is, when you step into a role uh, on a character based on real life, you know, someone as universally famous as George, how challenging is it? being as accurate as you possibly can be because you don't have the wiggle room that you might have with a fictional character. It's incredibly challenging, you know, uh, because you have your own mannerisms, you have your own way of um, expressing certain types of things. Uh, so all you can do is uh, try to find as many specific things that are indicators for his behavior, you know, as, as you can and try to emulate those as best as possible, you know? Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. I bet. Um, sports movies have been a big thing in Hollywood. Boxing probably more so than any other. Mm -hmm. Did you have any history with the sport before? Were you a fan? You know, any experience with it? Yeah, I mean, big fight fan. You know, uh, 
I never boxed before, so I've never been in the ring before, didn't glove up, you know, anything like that, gotten into fights before. But as we all know, that's a very different thing, you know, um, rumbling with some random individual and getting into the ring and doing some uh, controlled sparring. So, um, yeah, it was very, very new to me, man. <laughs> And the movie itself portrays two very different Georges, uh, the aggressive, hot-headed one who loves to fight, the more mm. calm, spiritual one who can fight, but they both look physically very different. In terms of your training regime, preparing for both of them roles, how, how did you manage that? And was there a big influx in weight? You know, how did it go? You mean from the first uh, being championship heavyweight uh, yeah. shape? And then, and then the second time. The yeah. second time around? Okay. So the first time around, you know, it uh, because we were training so much that, you know, I got into incredible fight shape. Mm -hmm. um, and week by week, I would fluctuate my weight because one week I would have to be the younger George and then the other week I'd have to be championship weight. So I would go from about 228 one week and then I would start picking up weight for the next week and then I'd be 242 next week you know and i would do that week by week but when uh that first block was over we took six weeks off for me to do the second half right cool. and i went from 225 to 275 in five weeks uh and i the heaviest i got was 282 uh, and i did that on a seven thousand calorie diet no way yeah so man. seven thousand calories a day Just yes sir. yes sir oh my God. And just last question for me, was there anything in particular that you struggled with in terms of trying to capture Georgia? Like one thing that was just tricky and you really, mannerisms, the boxing style? And then, I think, I th yeah, the, the boxing style. I mean, that was the trickiest one. I mean, because you're not just standing and talking, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're punching. His punching was specific. His yeah. footwork was specific. How he moved around the ring was specific. His fight IQ from the different decades of his life were very specific. Each fight was very specific. So that was the most difficult for me. I wanted every aspect of his fighting style uh, to be recognizable. You know, I didn't want any any style of punching or, you know, stop blocks or any matador and bull situations to, to come off as, as fluky. I wanted it to be powerful and specific because that's his legacy. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt. Big George Foreman, the miraculous story of the once and future heavyweight champion of the world.